we have finally did it. We have completed our landing page here, going from zero lines of code all the way to however many using artificial intelligence to help us throughout the entire process. As we know from lesson one, this is gonna cost me no money. Like absolutely no money to run. The only cost associated with this now is $12 a year. Therefore going back to our original situation where I was paying $18 a month, $216 a year, and $1,018 every five years. Well, guess what? Not anymore. Now that the website is complete, the purpose of this video is I'm gonna tell you what's next and on top of that, best practices. As a side note, if you're just finding this video and, you're, and you somehow found yourself on lesson 10, check out the playlist in description down below. We start at lesson one all the way to lesson 10 here, showing you how to build out an actual website. We're talking about functionality when it comes to external links, e.g. I click this banner, go to the external link. We're also talking about pop-ups within the website. What's the active investment? Automatically loads a YouTube video, Hello. automatically gets going. Scrolling down here, we have the ability to create different cards here. We also have the ability to sign up emails to our newsletter, like a ton of functionality. This was a webhook showing you how to secure webhooks, et cetera. And don't worry, we also made it mobile responsive for any type of screen. Looking pretty good. Now, the best part about creating a website is that this is basically digital real estate. This will always exist at my domain for the eternity unless I can't pay that $12 a month. So that's the first good thing about this. The second good thing is that best practices kind of goes over this entire tutorial here and the entire lessons you've seen up to this point. When you want to add additions to your website, make sure to create a separate branch, do it in local host, and then push to here. Now let's take this one step above that. What is the best of all best practices? That is doing a QA environment or alternatively named a staging environment. Let me give a brief rundown of what that is and then that's gonna lead up into the final part of this video. So what we've been doing up to this point is that we've been using the local environment. The local environment is what we saw with localhost 3000. And while using the local environment, when we're pushing to Firebase hosting, we've been just going directly to production, just shooting right to production seeing if it works, seeing if we're good. This kind of logic in the sense of we're in local host, it looks good pushing to prod, production, live website link, is fine in the context of very simple websites like landing pages, like what we did in this entire series, or just you know websites in general that don't have too much functionality. Although, if we're creating software, we don't do this. This would be very bad. If we're creating software, we do local to QA and then QA to production. So your first question might be is, Corbin, what the heck is a QA? Don't worry, what QA is, is a duplication of production, but a separate environment. To be more clear here, this is a separate Firebase project. This has separate Google Cloud functions for the backend. These two are carbon copies of each other, but it's one Firebase project dedicated to QA and one Firebase project dedicated to production. One Google Cloud dedicated in the backend for QA, one Google Cloud dedicated in the backend for production. The reason we do this is that we test the application in QA to make sure everything works good in a live environment. From QA then, once we confirm that, we then push to prod here that allows the general user base to access the new features as well. If that didn't make that much sense, don't worry, as that is the purpose of what's happening next. We are gonna be creating a playlist that shows you not how to actually create a website like we did in this playlist, but shows you how to actually create a software. I don't understand, Corbin, what do you mean actually? I mean like we're going to do zero lines of code to however many and build out a real live software. As a side note, some of y'all might be like, what the heck, why does this guy keep showing bump ups? This is the software I'm currently developing for context. What this means though, is that in this series, you thought this series was in depth for the last 10 episodes, holy smokes. I don't know how many episodes are gonna be in this next playlist I do dedicated to this topic, but it's gonna be lengthy. As when you work and create software, we're dealing with a whole nother shabam. What you saw in this series was purely front end development. This introduces backend development. This introduces a new language called Python, which I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with or at least heard. In addition, this includes a bunch of different stuff we could do in Firebase. Firebase storage, Firebase database, Firebase auth, Firebase, et cetera. Like this is gonna be a really in-depth series. So if you enjoyed this series and you followed me up to this point, let me show you how to use artificial intelligence to actually code out a software that is usable. And as I did with this web series, Half of the content will be found on YouTube and the other half will be found on my school community. Therefore, if you actually wanna learn how to build out AI software, you can follow me here on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe. You'll get the first half of how to build out software. And then the second half will be found here. If you don't wanna join, that's fine. But as a side note, that $19 is gonna be the cheapest it ever is. If you lock in now, you'll get that for life. In the future, it'll be higher. So let me go ahead and leave you with this then. So you know what's coming next in the future, building out software. If you have an idea for a software, you kinda of wanna be the focal point of this entire tutorial or this entire series and have me build it out, let me know in the comments down below. If something piques my interest, I'll use that as the focal point. If, if something doesn't, then I'll just do my own idea. That completes this entire series here, which is like four to five hours long. 
I'm not too sure. Pretty crazy. If you've been with me this entire journey, that's awesome. Make sure you leave a like. It's completely free. And I'll see you in the next video.